This video is brought to you by Loot Crate. Head today to LootCrate.com slash ReviewTechUSA and enter the code RTU to save 10% on any subscription plan. Skip it up and that up! So this is an excellent article by DualShockers. Gotta give a shout out to Giuseppe Nelva over there. Uh, differences aside, I gotta give credit where credit's due. He did a fantastic piece. And basically what his article was about is that while fanboys are literally attacking each other and threatening to kill each other over their preferred platform, whether they're P PlayStation fanboys, Nintendo fanboys, or Xbox fanboys. The executives from these companies are actually friends and could give a flying shit about your console war. It's funny because I gotta be honest, I thought this eighth generation, this console generation, I thought the whole fanboy war would have died down a little bit, to be honest with you. I thought people would have calmed down because People who were young when the seventh generation started, maybe are in their late teens, maybe even early 20s, because it was a long generation. And I thought everyone would have eased up. Okay, I thought people would have matured, would have grown up, and realized that who cares what piece of plastic you like? Yes, I'm quoting Black Bond there. Who cares what piece of plastic you like? But if anything, it got worse this generation. And what's even more frightening is that you have grown men my age and older who are the ones inciting these wars. It's ridiculous. You have people putting out other people's personal information, threatening them with physical violence, calling them every name under the sun, all over video games. Like Giuseppe says in the article, too, it's funny because probably the most popular or most famous console war was during the 16-bit generation between Sega and Nintendo. And I remember thinking as I got older, like, man, it'll never get worse than this. I mean, if you really think about it, you had Nintendo and Sega taken professional in terms of on their commercials, in their commercials, I should say, professional jabs at each other. But because of the internet, it actually has gotten a lot worse. And you have people threatening each other's lives over video games and it's really creepy what's making the console wars worse too is you have these quote-unquote journalists out there who are fanning the fanboy flames and it's funny in this article once again the dual sharkers article will be below in the description um you have these articles out there that they're literally have titles to bait people in to get them pissed off. And I've noticed some of these before, um, even before Giuseppe mentioned them. Uh, top 10 reasons why X is better than Y. I think I saw like a PS4, why it's better than Xbox One. My PS4 is a paperweight since launch. Of course, if there's a PS4 fanboy out there, they're going to click on that and rage. And this one I saw, I saw it was actually a, a video someone made. The Xbox One is a lying failure. And the reason these articles are made is that they know that people are going to go there and click on that. And it's clickbait. That's true. People call me out and say, I do clickbait. No, that's actual clickbait. This is the prime example right here of clickbait. So and that makes things worse. And you already and these articles, people who are diehard fanboys, it's these articles stress them out. And then they start arguing in the comment section, then it gets personal, and then you have people putting up other people's addresses and personal information so they could go out there and kick their asses. I've seen it firsthand before. It's insane. And I really think, and the part that's the most sad to me, and I really think that the fanboys think that the executives at both Sony and Microsoft, they, they act the same way, like they want to beat the shit out of you. Like you have like... Phil Spencer wanting to beat the shit out of Shuhei Yoshida at E3. And it's the exact opposite. These guys are friends with each other. They're grown men. They're, they're cool with each other. They, they're, they're adults. They act like human beings. And there's an example that Giuseppe brings up in his article. Uh, there was an exchange between Microsoft Studios' Aaron Greenberg and Sony Computer Entertainment VP uh, Adam Boys. Okay, and here's what was on Twitter. Greenberg wrote, file this under hashtag small world. Just ran into Adam Boys in same London hotel as we both have pre-games comms meetings here. Drinks are planned later. Sure seems like they hate each other, huh? Boys writes back, let's do this. We're on Carnaby Street. Swing through. Does it sound like they hate each other? Does it sound like because they work for competing companies that they're going to, you know, go to each other's house with baseball bats and kick each other's asses? Come on, guys. Another example I could think of off the top of my head is when Shuhei Yoshida praised Phil Spencer for taking over the Xbox division. He said he's a great guy. He, he's a good leader. He said nothing but positive things about him. Or what about when IGN interviewed 
interviewed Shuhei Yoshida and he brought up his concerns about Nintendo and admitted that he has two Wii U's in his home and that he wants Nintendo to do well because any company going under would be a bad thing. These guys don't hate each other, folks. They want the more competition, the healthier the market is, and they realize that. And I don't understand, not all, not everyone watching this video, 95% of you aren't fanboys. But for the fanboys out there, why are you so simple? Why are you fighting a war that no one gives a shit about? Look, I get there's some ape-like thing in the human brain called tribalism, where we instinctually feel that we have to protect and defend our tribe, which I guess some people feel are part of the Xbox tribe, or the PS4 tribe, or the Nintendo tribe, the Wii U tribe. You get what I'm saying. But at the same time, we're human beings. And we should be intelligent enough to realize that you're fighting a war over something that is totally... You're fighting a war over something that's solely meant for entertainment. You're threatening other people over something that's solely meant for entertainment. Do you realize how pathetic that is? Do you realize sitting there calling other people's names, telling them to kill each other or kill themselves over a video game makes you seem like the biggest loser in the world? Do you realize the company that you jump in front of a bullet for that you attack other people who question anything they do these could these companies don't care as a matter of fact like i just quoted before they're friends and hang out with each other when they're at conferences so while you're looking to kill somebody who may like the ps4 and you like the xbox one you have the executives from both microsoft and sony getting drinks together you look like an asshole face it and deal with it the bottom line is guys and i know i'm fighting an uphill battle just enjoy what you enjoy. If you only like gaming on Nintendo, that's fine. If you only like gaming on Microsoft platforms, that's fine. If you only like gaming on Sony PlayStation platforms, it's okay. But to hate other people and actually strongly dislike them because they don't have the same gaming tastes you do, it makes you seem pathetic. Let it go. There's much more important things in life. And I know this is going to fall on deaf ears, but I had to say it anyway. All right, folks, this is Rich of Review Tech USA. Make sure to rate, comment, favorite, and subscribe. And as always, thank you for supporting my channel. Have a good one. The preceding video was brought to you by Big Cheese's YouTube channel. For gameplay reviews, gaming music, and vlogs, subscribe to Big Cheese VG. Link below in the description.